Welcome to Church Entrepreneur's Podcast. My name is Richard Moore. I'm your host and informant for everything church, theology, and faith related. Church Entrepreneur's vision is to accelerate the church and mission, vision, and effectiveness and fulfilling the Great Commission in our communities. Church Entrepreneur's hopes to embolden people to fulfill the Great Commission beyond their own borders into the rest of the world within this generation. It's possible, folks. In this podcast, I talk about everything that's moving me in relation to church and theology, hopefully to empower you in your ministry, Bible study, theological understanding, and your personal growth in Christ. Hopefully, at least your personal growth in Christ. So today, I thought I'd do something a little different. Um, one of my good buddies, Tilo Teschendorf, um, is uh, going to be with me as a guest. Uh, and uh Tilo, I, we, we met each other actually kind of in a wild way through the book I wrote called uh, Divergent Theology. Your mother got a, your mother-in-law got a copy of the book and contacted me and then we met you. Uh, uh, Tilo is, give a little background of who Tilo is. He's a worship leader, a church planter. I mean, he's the, he's actually a churchpreneur, um, the quintessential churchpreneur. He's doing all sorts of different things in ministry as his own podcast as well. And I uh, thought I'd just invite Tilo uh, to come on the show, talk about a few things. We've got, I've got something I wanted to do kind of special. Uh, we'll have, a, we'll have two, a two part show today, uh, or at least try it anyways. We'll see how it goes, right? Uh, Tilo's got two kids, twins. They're uh, wonderful boys. He live in Berlin uh, with his wife, who is also uh, uh, about to have a ch- another child, a girl. So congrats on that. And um, Tilo has been most recently involved with uh, with a worship movement, if you don't mind me saying that. Uh, I think that's okay, right? That's cool, yeah. Uh, worship movement uh, called Burn 24-7 um, has actually, I'll give a little background to this and then we'll get into what we're going to do today. Give a little background to his life. He got in touch with me because I wrote my book, Divergent Theology, which is about the movement called the New Apostolic Reformation. So Tilo reached out, his, his mother-in-law as well reached out. They had been apart for some time in that movement. And um, uh, the Burn 24-7 is, is a worship movement. It's really affected by the, by the New Apostolic Reformation, the Word of Faith movement, and, and the like. Uh, so they reached out and said, hey, would y'all be willing to come uh, and just hang out with us in Berlin for a little bit, get to know you? They really were, um, I think you, your, your testimony, and you can, you're welcome to share as much as you want today, but was about like seeing the movie, The American Gospel. That's right, yeah. That's yeah, the American Gospel film had a real effect on you, and you said that was kind of the, the knick um, for you just to say, whoa, something is really amiss here in some of the teaching and things that I've been a part of even and, uh, and the teachers that I've trusted and, and listened to for a long time. And, and it really was a, you started to really question a lot. I mean, is that right? Am I, am I characterizing that correct, correctly? Yeah. I mean, of course, so. uh, one of the major things it's like, of course there's like little teachings, minor teachings, so to say mm-hmm. in the whole movement and in any denomination that we might disagree with. Right. And we can disagree with and agree to disagree in the long run. But then there's some major truths and doctrines. If they're trying to be, if people try to shake on those and try to turn them over and say, hey, right. that's actually not true. Like, let's say for my case or in the instance of what I went through was the divinity of Christ. If anything is questioned about who Jesus Christ is, that he's 100% God and 100% man, that doesn't make him 200% God man. Right. But it's like, you know, like that mm-hmm. there's no question about it at any time of his being on earth or him being before he came on earth or after he went into heaven. There's no yeah. question about it. He is who he is. And if someone says, oh, for this amount of time, I wasn't, uh, he wasn't a uh, human or he wasn't God. That's it's, like, yeah. okay, that's false. It's just not yeah. biblical. Yeah. It's heresy, right. historical heresy. And yeah. that's kind of where it started for me, I guess. So, so I love, I love how excited you're getting right away. Uh, just wanted to thank yeah. you. So thanks Tilo for coming on the show. I love that it. We're a, just, we jumped in with both feet into the divinity of Christ. Right. Right. <laughs> it's no, perfect. It's so I mean, I, I, you'll probably be able to tell throughout this show, I guess, why we became fast friends. Um, so Tilo, we visited uh, you in Berlin, saw your uh, life, your 
your family a little bit, got to know you guys. A wonderful family too. Just uh, uh, really excited to get to know, to have that opportunity to get to know them. It was a long drive though, bro. It was really was. A long drive. <laughs> we drove from the south of Germany That's to right. the to the to Berlin where they live, and uh, I, I, it's really exciting to to meet uh, like minded folks, folks who want to be active and alive in God's kingdom um, as well. But but maybe you're saying, wait a minute, um, not all that glitters is gold in some of these movements. So give us a little bit taste of your journey, right? You've right. come out of a movement that is associated with Bethel, um, okay. among other, I guess, churches. And, and I mean, you knew you were in the worship ministry movement. Mm -hmm. what, what was your, you know, you, you started to st see some issues and things and saying, wait, something doesn't add up here. Mm -hmm. um, and, and some of the names you were in the Bethel movement, uh, the worship movement, at least your mother-in-law would, would send me some of the uh, people you're going around with and were in the worship circles. And, <clears throat> Those are the names of people I knew from from my research in the, into this movement. What was the maybe the points? One or two or three things that you said. Wait a minute, um, something done that up here. If you can give us a little insight into what you started seeing, right? So um, you know, it wasn't like from one to the other day that I finally saw something, but I think it was from from all these years I've been part of the burn twenty four seven worship movement for about 10 years before us not and that wasn't the first time after 10 years that i saw something mm -hmm. um i've always been in the charismatic circle so there's a lot of weird stuff and not a lot of it not everything i agree with right there is some stuff that i disagree with and um didn't like so much like let's say um i didn't like very much like people falling over and I didn't want to fall over. So being I'd slain in the spirit, slain in the spirit or had right. holy laughter or whatever. And sometimes that would happen. And then, you know, that kind of stuff, like there's some questionable stuff that I always was like, hmm, I don't know if I like that very much. And if that's really the Holy spirit, uh, right. what the Bible is talking about, but that's just like on the side and kind of a small issue. So there's always been something here and there. Um, some of yeah. the teachings uh, that we got through the burn 24 um, seven movement in um, a thing called the field training is basically an online course. Um, there were some questionable yeah. things in there from uh, okay. a woman. I don't know if her name is, is it Patricia Qu King or. Um, oh yeah. Patricia King is a big part of the movement of, of the I, I new apostolic. I don't you know. know if she was the one who was teaching it or um, there's another um, woman, blonde hair prophetess in the movement, yeah. so to say. And she was teaching something that I felt just like, okay, you took a, part in the bible and of course it's hard for you guys to check right whoever's listening but uh for me it was like wow you guys uh are playing with the bible like you're well, they count on that just just as a just so you know they count yeah. on that no one can check behind them in us i mean when there's preaching at a big conference or something like that mm -hmm. or on a video no one's going to check behind them it just sounds wonderful so yeah right so i i uh had the chance to listen to this video sermon um, of this uh, prophetess, so-called prophetess, and she was basically uh, sharing a story from the Old Testament and uh, trying to make a point that was on the agenda of the teaching session, right? And mm -hmm. that for me that, again, just a minor issue for me personally, a small one that didn't make me leave or want to leave anything, but I was like, wow, yeah. you guys are playing with the Bible, right? So, so do you remember what it was? Do you remember what the issue oh, yeah. was? Yeah. I mean, the, the thing was, so the, the topic was uh, family and community and which is mm -hmm. a Christian value, no matter what, right? We want to yeah. be in community. We want to be in fellowship. We want to be in family mm -hmm. with each other. And that's a wonderful thing. That was one of the core values or is one of the core values of the burn 24 seven. Um, so that was one of the sermons on that. And she used a specific scripture from the old Testament where Elijah and please were, uh, yeah, please correct me if I'm wrong um, there and misinterpreting it wrong or just rephrasing it wrong, but just paraphrasing basically Elijah uh, in the middle of a drought or a bad time of the land uh, goes to this one woman with her son and uh, he tells them, okay, make me some bread. And it was the last oil and the last grain that they had. And then 
they basically knew, okay, I, we don't have enough anymore for ourselves. So we're going to bake you that bread, Elijah, because you asked us to, and then we're going to die. They knew that, right? They were obedient though, towards what mm -hmm. Elijah was mm -hmm. saying. So, and then Elijah prayed or something happened and this miracle um, appeared that the oil would right. never run dry. So there was always oil from then on for that woman in that household. So that's the story, right? Roughly. Right. I don't know if that's all the details are right here, but that's yeah. basically what got, I got. got I still remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the most important stuff is there. So now we know there's a miracle. So the yeah. focus is on the miracle. The and miracle, now the yeah. comes in. That was a little weird. And you can, of course, like just dump it or ignore it. But I was like, wow, that's like, what are you talking about? That's not even in there. So the teaching then was, um, okay, because they were in sense, in a sense, they were a community and a fellowship or a family, only then a miracle could happen. <laughs> and now because, and only miracles can happen because now we are focusing on being a fellowship, being a community, being a family together. And only then a miracle can happen. It's basically the uh, catalyst, right? so to right. say for miracles and now miracles must happen it, it wasn't because god did it or it something like that or obedience or hum, right. like humility or like giving up your own life for a prophet who tells you what god wants you to do you know what you know what that sounds like to me you remember the uh, you probably i don't know if your generation uh, you remember gumby the the, the okay. flexible character you know that uh can okay. uh, bend and flex he's right. a, he's yeah. a true americana right this is true okay. americana He's the green <laughs> character that can flex and bend. Okay. And so it sounds like um, kind of some Gumby exegesis, you know, Man. flexing that uh, passage to mm. really, it's it's a stretching point, let's say. <laughs> and again, right, so you, you can take that and just say, okay, that was, that's messed up. Okay, that part, not everything was messed up, not everything was bad in the teaching. Mm -hmm. um, and you can say anything about the people. I don't know the people. I don't know their characters. So it doesn't yeah. really matter to me. What matters is what they're teaching. And obviously yeah. as teachers, we're responsible and we're um, judged differently than, <laughs> than the ones that that's are it. not teaching. So well, that's one of the scariest, that's one of the scariest verses in the whole Bible to me is, is you know, you teachers will be judged with stricter judgment. <sighs> right, right. We got to handle the word of God correctly. We got to right. describe him correctly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyways, so, so was yeah, there so that was one of the first things that was one of the, that, that kind of started the process like, hmm, like that was like, wow, like, this is like, okay, this is in the movement, right? This is teaching in the movement. Then we have, yeah. um, let's say, um, my wife and I put up a Germany conference and you, Richard, are really the first one I'm actually talking to about this. I was planning on releasing because um, I left the whole movement, right? The whole leadership. Yeah. Burn and I was leading yeah. Burn 24 7 in Berlin for a year. And then I decided because of what I found out, um, the shocking truth, so to say, um, mm -hmm. I, um, I wanted to make a statement, still haven't done that. So you're the first one who's actually now officially hearing that and probably publishing that. So I'm, uh, uh, I'm at the same okay. time scared. At the same time, I'm super amazed and, and honored that you're having me on and ask me all these questions. So well, man, I'm honored that you would make that announcement by by us at Churchpreneurs. Right. I hope that God is going to bless that in in this way. Yes. I mean, we're I mean, we're praying for you. We prayed for you this morning for your Dang. meeting. Whatever you passed on to me. Yes. Thank um, I I'm going to stand behind you, um, as as much as I can, um, That's awesome, man. to 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 stand behind this journey for you to say, you know what, um, you're noticing things. You're saying, hmm. God, um, I need to, I need to stand behind your word mm -hmm. as my authority and, uh, uh, you know, really put no man on that pedestal, um, that, that the word of God should take the place of. So Correct. we're just standing behind you. Um, I don't know what this will, uh, will produce for you in the long run, but stay faithful brother. Um, yes, and, man. um, you know, uh, we don't know what the future holds, but the Lord is there already. He is there. He's in the past. He's in the present. He's in the future. He's there already. He knows the beginning from the end. He knows uh, he has your your days mapped out for you before you had lived yet one of them. 
Isn't that beautiful? You know, it was wow. your children's days before they had lived yet one of them. And um, he's going he's gonna to provide uh, like he always has. And stay true to him. Stay true to his word. Anyways, that's my encouragement to you. God bless you, you in that. And we'll just um, we'll just see what 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 God's going to do as a result. He's right. bringing there, there's a groundswell happening, Tilo. I mm -hmm. want you to know that there's a groundswell of people saying, "Wait, the red flag's going up." Wait a minute. Um, and so for me, you know, I, I would upon your two things, I would if I were you, I would check out if I were you, listener, mm -hmm. uh, Bill Johnson's uh, view of Christ. Just take a deeper, longer look at that. Uh, the most recent thing he he did say at uh, Awakening Australia was that Jesus did not do his miracles as God. Um, and it's it's very clear from the context, from the the, the 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 clip that was displayed all over the place, three and a half, four minute clip, nothing taken out of context. He said it in his own words. The point is for him, Jesus. If Jesus did his miracles as God then we would not be able to reproduce them. And we have to reproduce miracles. We have to bring heaven to earth. We're required to do that. So um, if Jesus did his miracles as God, then we can't reproduce them because he did them as God. You know? I don't know, when was the last time you, Tilo, uh, turned water into wine? Have you ever done that before? That's I a head scratch. I, I mean, I've never tried to make wine anyways. <laughs> But I think I'd be pretty <laughs> right, right. horrible at it. To start off with, Honestly, we would be we would yeah. be probably pretty terrible winemakers. <laughs> That's right. So. Let's move to France to find out. Right, right, right. That's We're actually in great right wine place. country here right. in the south. That's true. Um, but anyway, so um, yeah, I mean, uh, are we meant to reproduce the miracles of, of Jesus Christ? Man, I mean, that's a very good question. Uh, yeah. What I found is exactly what you just said. What um, Bill Johnson said in the uh, um, Awakening Australia. That's exactly the comment that made me gulp. And I was yep. like, what did you just say? Whoa. <laughs> I mean, you're saying that, like, what did he do? How can he not do them as God and as man? I mean, what are you saying? Like, yep. he turned off his godliness or right. like, how like is that even possible? Switch. How can God not be God? Yeah. Either he's God or he's not. So, And, then and that's the thing. That's it. Either he did everything as God or nothing as God. You can't turn it on because the immutability, there's a, there's a, there's a theological uh, term called the immutability of God. It means he doesn't change. He never changes. And if Jesus had turned off his divinity or something like that for a moment to do a little miracle here on the side, he was never God to begin with because God cannot change. Yeah. And so this is the challenge. This is the, this is the, the problematic stuff that stands behind all this. Um, and when you play with, when you toy with the divinity of Jesus, when you toy with, uh, the, uh, this stuff, um, it can get very, very sketchy. Like what, I, what I saw then, as you quoted already earlier in the American gospel, like they show here and there, right? So what they're doing really greatly in that video and that documentary, that's like two and a half hours, I think. Yeah. Present the, um, the gospel in a way that, I haven't seen it before and they're doing a massively amazing job at that like showing yeah. you, like that's the purest form of the gospel what the bible actually says and this is what we've done to the gospel like this is what we added and this is what we've taken away from it yeah and, um and exactly who, did, did christ do um a complete job at the cross or do, do we now have to add something to that and i believe what um Teachers like Bill Johnson, I'm not just saying he, him exclusively, but teachers like him in the whole um, camp of the charismatic end of the NAR um, are adding things to the gospel that don't need to be added. So mm -hmm. whoever's mm -hmm. listening, figure out what the gospel is. Go and look up the, the purest form of the gospel, what's, what you can find in the Bible. And then I would say just double check what you're hearing by some of those teachers, what they're yeah. doing with the person of Christ, with the divinity of Christ. It's super fascinating for me. The process still is and super shocking that I haven't seen that since I've become a believer since 2002, I made a yeah. commitment to Christ. And now in 2019, 17 years later, for the first time, I, I feel like I saw, wow, I the thought I knew gospel. the word. Yeah. 
I thought I knew the gospel. I was actually evangelizing on the streets for the last 10 years on a regular basis all over Europe with my family as a ministry. And we've been preaching the gospel, but then still hearing all that stuff and not seeing what they're really saying because they're very eloquent. You know, they're very well trained. They know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they're saying. It's not that they're stupid or oh, they made a mistake. Oh, they didn't mean that. No. Yes, they mean exactly yeah, what you're saying. Because like right now what we're saying yeah. is exactly what we mean, what we're saying. We're not trying to be like sneaky. They're trying to be, I believe there is a sneakiness, but they really believe in it too. It's they a really clever, there's a real clever presentation. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. you're right on that. Okay. And a lot, a large part of the, the book that I wrote was about his teaching and his, and his teaching on Christology, especially mm-hmm. that is very, very tenuous. Um, at, at, at the very least, um, it, it erodes the, the Christo, the, 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 the divinity of Christ down to a level. I mean, what, what I believe he's trying to do is kind of knock us down a peg or knock us up a peg and knock Christ down a peg. Right. So we're so a we're little bit more, level. a little bit more on the same level. So you're basically Anyways. like him, you're him. And that means that you can do all the things that he can do exactly yeah. the same way he did them. Yeah. And now we actually don't like, if you logically follow that conclusion, like for me, that was just like the steps I was taking. Okay. If Christ did all the miracles that he did, not as God, but as human, mm-hmm. then what about the miracle of, the cross the dying receiving the full wrath of god and dying under that's a miracle to me that that's the question if christ didn't die as god on the cross we have nothing first corinthians 15 uh, 1 1 15 through 20 connects christ's divinity to his uh atonement Mm -hmm. he had to have been god fully God dying on the cross for us in our place. Man could not, only a true man or anything less than God, right? Knock him down a peg, right? Could not have uh, atoned for our sins on the cross. Impossible. So, um, yeah, so this is hugely important. If you think about it, you know, then if he did that as man, then he basically then you can do that too. You can just go on the cross, have the wrath of God poured out on you, even though God wouldn't need to do that anymore. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, There's still wrath being stored up for, Mm. you know, the second death, I believe. So there's still more wrath of God, but will you now, is that what he's requiring us to do? Like do that miracle too and greater ones? What will that be, right? I mean, it's just like completely, that's fallacy. It's just wrong, wrong, wrong to go there because it, yep. doesn't, it, it doesn't end in a good place. It ends in a yep. really bad place of us being like Christ or higher. Yeah. Tilo, uh, great Man, yeah. discussion here. You know, we could probably go on all night, but here, oh. let's do this. We're going to do it in a two-parter. Awesome. We're going to talk to Tilo in the next uh, section now and get to know him a little better, his, little te- his personal testimony. Um, where he's coming from, um, his ministry right now. So, um, Tilo, uh, tell us maybe where they, where we can follow you. You can follow you on Twitter and and uh, your podcast. Tell us that information real quick, and then we'll we'll get an outro here. Well, as uh, fresh as your podcast is, ours is even fresher <laughs> still. Um, we're still on. We means really we have two podcasts right now, and they're going to come out at the end of the year, if not even at the beginning of the year. So. The listeners are okay. satisfied um, in getting consecutive episodes on a regular basis. And right. And have to wait half a year for us. To right. do so. so there's a lot of editing happening right now. But those uh, two podcasts are um, called, one is called Three Talk Truth. It's literally me, my wife, and my mother-in-law. And we always do that. But we're literally sitting to get together, the three of us, for an hour, hour and a half um, and talk about the things that matter to us and the to the fact of faith right faith theology yep. any anything and what interests us what sparks our interests and our discussions we just take it to the mic and people can listen into that and so that one's called that. three talk truth so That's three right. of you guys talking truth good okay exactly. we're Great. trying the best way to be truthful to the word of course and get the bible are. out and 
talk about it, bro. That's and the way you do it. Sometimes even disagree, and that's fun too, right? To see there yeah. is different perspectives on the minor <clears throat> issues and on the major yeah. issues. We all agree, which is beautiful. So it's not always heavily theological, um, but it goes into uh, interesting topics that always relate back to the Word and to our life with Christ. So that's always okay, that's great. always our main focus. And so that's that one. And the other one is uh, called um, Bible Readers Talk, and I had you already on there for an episode and you will be obviously one of my guests for a couple of episodes here and there on different topics. But sure. literally my passion for this podcast is um, that um, me as a Bible reader and anyone who's as a guest there. So I'm the one who's hosting that one. And anyone who comes on as a guest, we'll talk deeply about the scriptures exclusively yeah. and any doctrinal um, like disputes or arguments or whatever or even talking about heresies why is that a heresy what's the truth why did the church uh, council decide that and so on and so forth mm -hmm. what's the gospel what's the trinity yep. and i know those might seem like as basic baby truth but i think they're very important to cover those ones as well um your short question and long answer but there's <laughs> two podcasts coming up and all either at the end of the year, hopefully at the end of the year, if not at the beginning of the next year, you can find them on iTunes, on Google Play, or any, uh, anywhere on any podcasting app uh, that you have right. on your phone or whatever. What's the second yeah. one called again? Tell us that. So it's, uh, the first one is a three talk truth. The second one is Bible readers talk. So great. BRT or whatever Bible readers talk you're going to find. It. And you can just search for my name probably as the host and you'll find it. Tilo Teschendorf. Tilo Teschendorf. Is there a way to follow you on Twitter or anything like that? Do you do that? Do you sure, tweet? I don't do Twitter at all. So, sadly. Oh, should, wow. Because. Uh, uh, um, Amazing. Yeah, I just stay I away from that. that. A little bit, but I never, never really yeah, got yeah. into it fully. And I know there's a whole community out there that um, probably needs to hear this stuff. So I should get on it. Right. But Will I'm you be leading worship anytime book. soon or, or anything like that? People in the Berlin area might be able to find you. Man. And. So I have a website myself. It's called tiloteschendorf.com. So that's me uh, as a worship leader. Um, Great. You can find, uh, and I released an album in 2016. That's a worship album. It's called Back to the Father. has a little bit of my story at the end of the album. So you can find that anywhere on Spotify. I've been listening whatever. to it. I yeah, can so recommend it. <laughs> that's nice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so that supports a little bit of what we do as well. Um, if you want to tell us about your, uh, your, your ministry as well uh, on top of that, your, your street sure. ministry. Sure. So we started that. And so my mother-in-law and wife actually started that before they met me in 2010 and, uh, the ministry is called to the streets and basically what we did and, uh, have been doing since until now is, uh, go out on the streets and share the gospel with, uh, non, non-believers, right. On any, uh, culture, any group. And we've traveled actually for two and a half years. And that period of time, we traveled all the way through Europe to, I think, 26 or 28 countries um, in two and a half years and stopped everywhere we stopped. We went out and started preaching the gospel on the streets. That needs to be a podcast right there. By dude, itself, dude so. it's a, a heck of an experience. <laughs> I can recommend it for anyone. It boosts your faith level. Yeah. I mean, if you don't have faith for God's provision, I mean, if you're really in I feel like if you're in what God has asked you to do, then he will definitely provide. Like you seek the kingdom yeah. of God first and uh, his righteousness and then everything else will be added to you, right? Or given to you yeah. what you need. And I'm not talking prosperity. I'm talking about the basics. And then just, anything above that eating. is beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. That's right. We need, right? We need gas, Amazing. we need water, we need food, we need a shower, we need a toilet and uh, our cars broken down. All, I mean, that's an... We should write a book about it. I mean, just that a short time. Something. That <laughs> would have be a something. documentary about it. But yeah, so yeah. that's what we did. There's a website to it as well. It's called To The Streets. In one word, to the streets, no, no numbers, dot .eu okay. for Europe. So you can find okay. that there. To the yeah. streets dot .eu. Okay, exactly. check that out. My guest today is Tilo Teschendorf. Uh, thanks, Tilo, so much for coming on uh, in part two. I'm going to have him as well as a guest, and we're going to talk about his story a little more, What what's going on in his life. And uh, so thanks for listening to Churchpreneur's Podcast. You can find out more information um, at my website uh, about Churchpreneur's, richardpmore.net. And I also blog myself at richardpmore.blogspot.com. You can also follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at richardpmore23. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any ideas for a podcast or any other ideas, please reach out on one of those platforms. God bless you and may he richly bless you in Christ. Until next time.
Take care.